Now, as Judge David Hall prepares to impose sentences on Tom and Molly Martins for the voluntary manslaughter of Jason Corbett, we can expect more argument and potential victim impact statements today. And uh, how will the words of the innocents tilt the scales of justice? Well, joining me now is Ralph Regal, Southern Correspondent with the Irish Independent, who's been following proceedings in court. Ralph, good morning. Good morning, Pat. Now, first of all, a summary of what happened uh, yesterday. I mean, the Corbett's are uh, poor, helpless creatures who were only defending themselves and in spite of the damage they inflicted on Jason Corbett were left without a scratch. Yeah, that's very much what was said about Tom and Molly Martin yesterday. And it proved a very difficult day um, for the Corbett family. There's extensive members of the Corbett family in court. Uh, There's Jason Corbett's sister, Tracy. Of course, there are his two children, uh, Jack and Sarah, there's his twin, uh, Wayne, there's his sister, Marilyn, there's uh, a number of nephews in court as well, and friends. And it was very emotional evidence yesterday. Um, there were two experts uh, that were hired by the defence. Uh, one of them was a Dr. Corvin. He was offering forensic psych- psychiatric analysis of the state of mind that Tom Martins was in on the evening of the fatal assault on Jason Corbett. Dr. Corvin was saying that um, Tom Martins is a type A personality, a very ordered man. He relies on logic. And when his attempts to calm the situation didn't work, he had a catastrophic failure of his management systems. And he basically succumbed to this fight or flight um, evolutionary um, response, which was basically to keep fighting until he thought the threat to him was over. But the most emotional evidence was from a Dr. Scott Hampton, uh, he was he's a psychiatrist, but he specializes in um, domestic violence or domestic abuse. And he effectively categorized um, Jason Corbett as an abuser. Uh, he said that in, in probably the most harrowing part, I would think, of the entire hearing to date, uh, there were photographs shown to uh, Dr. Hampton. And those photographs included the, the scene photographs of Jason Corbett lying naked on the floor, covered in blood, blood spatters on the carpet, on the walls, on the ceiling, on the furniture. He was also shown photographs of Jason Corbett in the pathology, the examination room. And, you know, such were that I'm conscious of the hour of the morning over there. It's quite early in the morning here as well. But just suffice to say that there were horrific head injuries sustained by Jason Corbett. There were a minimum of 12 blows to his head. And such was the damage to the skull that at one point when the pathologist was attempting to prepare for the postmortem, there were pieces of the skull falling out onto the examination table. So you can imagine how horrific those photographs were. And when Dr. Hampton examined them, his only response was it showed how terrified that Tom and Molly Martins oh, were on the night. Dear, oh dear. Of the family they were so very, terrified very... they destroyed a man's skull. So terrified yeah. were they and emerged yeah. without a scratch. Yeah, and it was very upsetting for the family. Um, There was an audible gasp in the court yesterday, Pat. Um, People were shocked that there would be that type of response. Um, There was one member of the family literally involuntarily said, oh God. Uh, Afterwards, as they left the court, there were members of the family visibly upset by the evidence. And uh, that, that was the point that Judge Hall then interjected and he said, look, I won't have any interruptions or commentary on my proceedings. If anyone is upset by evidence, they have the full freedom to leave the courtroom. And it was just that type of day. It was quite upsetting. And and Dr. Hampton's evidence, like he described his report as an investigation, but he relied entirely on materials supplied by the Martins legal team. And in large part, the testimony of Molly Martins, who, of course, we know, according to the prosecution, and, and very detailed evidence that has a very complicated relationship with the truth. She's lied about being a foster parent. She lied about being Sarah's biological mother. She lied about being on the swim team of a major US university. Um, she lied about having a sister who died of cancer, believe it or not. And she even lied about giving birth to Sarah. And she lied about knowing Sarah's mother. And when these points were put to Dr. Hampton, that look, you've relied entirely on material given to you. So isn't the credibility of the people that are giving you this material very important? And what if they're telling lies? 
And his only response was that he doesn't like the word lies, that he prefers to call it future pacing, whereby people set goals in the future for themselves, or what is their communication? Are they trying to talk about the kind of life that they would like to lead? And that's really the type of witness you were dealing with. (laughs) Dear, oh dear, oh dear. It only goes to show that in the American system, and probably in systems all over the world, you can pay experts to say black is white and white is black. And both sides... Uh, you know, bring on their expert witnesses. And uh, it's extraordinary how eminent people educated to the highest degree in various universities around the place can actually see things in absolutely polar opposite uh, directions. Quite extraordinary. Yeah, very much so. And I think the contrast between the current hearing and what happened in 2017 is quite stark. A lot of the details of the circumstances of Jason Corbett's death that came out in 2017 have not come out so far. Now, we're expecting some of those to be referenced in the closing arguments. We're basically at the concluding phase of witnesses. So what we will next will happen, and Pat, is that we'll go to closing arguments. There are three lawyers operating for uh, Tom and Molly Martins. There's Jones Bird and there's Jay Van Oy for uh, Mr. Martins. And there's Douglas Kingsbury, who's representing Molly Martins. And then for the state, you have three assistant district attorneys. You've Alan Martin, you've Caitlin Jones, Jones and you have Marissa Parker. Uh, so there will definitely be three submissions on behalf of the defence. We're still waiting to see whether there will be just one or three closing arguments for the prosecution. And after that, we will then get to the victim impact stage. And we do know that there will be a number of victim impact statements on behalf of the Corbett family, uh, which will outline not just the impact on them and their lives of the death of Jason Corbett, the appalling circumstances in which he died, but also the toll that they've paid having been caught in this judicial um, process for eight years. Extraordinary stuff. Well, we await uh, the judge's finding before we cast uh, our verdict on the the effectiveness or otherwise of the US uh, judicial system. But Ralph, thank you very much uh, for joining us on the line. Ralph Regal, who is Southern Correspondent with the Irish Independent.